Welcome back to Fin Week Money Matters. Well, becoming an entrepreneur can be a soul-destroying endeavor. Raising capital, coming to terms with the basics of doing business, understanding the business cycles, providing good customer services, and managing cash flow while still putting food on the table it all, it can all be very overwhelming. Well, making mistakes is a part of the entrepreneur learning curve, but some mistakes are universal. In this segment, we'll be discussing the mistakes entrepreneurs make before starting a business the most common mistakes in the first year of doing business and mistakes more established entrepreneurs often make. Well, joining, me, joining us here on the desk is Ravi Govender, who's the head of small business enterprises at Standard Bank, and Peter Skolz, who's the master franchiser of Action Coach. Gentlemen, thank you so much for making the time to join us today. Ravi, let's, t let's start with you. Sure. What stands out to you as being the most common mistake that you see with business owners? Let's start in the first year, just as people are getting started. I think in the first year or before the first year, amazing ideas, but no business plan to support it, no financial acumen, misreading your markets become an issue. So how do you match passion versus the actually making money? And that's the biggest mistake that people make. Research, 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 understand your market, understand your product, understand your price, and understand your pitch. So you're saying often the ideas are there, there's just no financial literacy to back, back them up? Absolutely. I see entrepreneurs by default, they manage their business by their default competency. Mm. And if your default competency is marketing mm. and lack of financials, you're certainly in the failure. And we don't complement those skills often. So how do you compensate for that? If you don't know as a startup entrepreneur how to put together a business plan, uh, what, what are the, the main things that you should be looking at in a business plan? I think as entrepreneurs, you have to complement those brilliant ideas with complementary skills. Uh, go and research, speak to people that have done business plans before, speak to other business owners, uh, sp speak to formal institutions that can coach you in those business plans. At the end of the day, don't outsource your business plans, write it yourself mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. you understand your numbers. Peter? Yeah, I, I think Ravi's correct. I mean, I think that besides the planning and getting the plans right in, in your particular business and getting that right, I just want to add to that. Number one is that what I often see people is, is writing the plan, but then the plan goes into file 12, and they never in actual fact stick to the plan. Sure. So the big issue for me is around <coughs> making sure that as you start, is you've got somebody holding you accountable for that. Mm -hmm. The second point I want to pick up is, I find that quite often business owners identify one product or one product segment to go into. They don't actually understand what their unique selling proposition is. So therefore, mm -hmm. price competitiveness becomes an issue, and so it's margin decline is one thing. And the, th and the, and the th third point I want to pick up is that I, I also see too many business owners going into business where 50% or more of their revenue is coming from one customer source. Mm -hmm. And the moment that customer source turns off or switches off from your customer range, you haven't got a business. And in fact, my view is that if, you, if you've only got, if you've got 50% of your business coming from one source, you actually don't have a business. Mm -hmm. So Peter, before you start your business, before you quit your job and make a dramatic exit of you know, not working for the man anymore, what should you have in place? Well, we were talking about it early on. We said, number one is cash flow. You know, there's an old adage that it takes you twice as long and twice, amount, twice the amount of money to actually get your business up and running. So that's critical. Don't underestimate the amount of time and money it takes to get your business up and running. So how do you walk that fine line between being too stuck to one idea and not changing along the way and persisting with an idea until you've, you've really worked out whether it will work or not? How do you tell which route to go? I, I, I think it's being very clear about you know, what the product is that you want to offer out there. Going, and secondly, is to go and understand which market segment you want to go into. So there might be one, one great product you want to put onto the market, but look a little bit beyond that and to see which market segment do I, or do I want to go, go and offer in. And to what extent can I leverage other products off the, the key product I'm, I'm driving at the moment? And so therefore have ancillary product ranges or ancillary markets that I can get into. Mm. Ravi, we've been talking about the mistakes that we make the first time we go into business. If you're five years or ten years in, do people tend to make the same mistakes? I think we are creatures of habits. Uh, to my earlier point, um, I'm very passionate about the inability of, for entrepreneurs to reinvent themselves. So, so the very first thing that got them successful is the very, very first thing that will, will fail from, from that perspective. To my earlier point, 
if, if I'm a default competence marketer and I go and run my business mm -hmm. and I have the inability to run operational excellence, finance excellence, so what happens is I fall short on the other competencies. Eventually your product becomes history, your customers become very frustrated with you and your business fails from that point of view. The other thing that I, I'm, I'm very interested in is uh, the ability to think big and act small. Too many entrepreneurs go too quick, too big. Mm -hmm. And, and it has very, very unintended consequences in terms of cash flow planning, funding that business, and eventually they find themselves in the business as opposed to on the business. So how do you manage from the curves of cradle to grave, and how do you start the next curve is, is a challenge for entrepreneurs in my view. But how do you find that balance? Because we often hear you should think big, and you should dream big, and you should pursue your passions. How do you find the balance between dreaming too little and dreaming too big? I think it's the balance of, of how you spend your time in your business. So if you, if you know that you have this great idea and if you complement the skills in terms of running the business, then you balance in terms of thinking about the next big idea. Because that's what made me successful in the first place, the first big idea. So I think, I think entrepreneurs need to learn to find that balance, reflect, uh, and, and, and get sort of coaching within their business, and, and not get caught up into the operating cash flow paradigm mm -hmm. trap uh, that they always find themselves into. If I can just add to I mean, I think one of the other big lessons we've, we're finding in the industry that we're op operating in is, that, is getting business owners to measure key, perform, key performance indices in the business and know what metrics are taking place in the business. Mm -hmm. Too many business owners are relying purely on cash flow mm -hmm. and or money in the bank as the key only indicator to success. And it's imperative for them to actually understand what, what are the key metrics in the business that in actual fact driving growth. So, you know, coming back to the question earlier on, how do you find that balance? Understand where you need to be at a particular point in time and what's the next lever for you to leverage to get into growth, growth aspects. So and just to add on that, the further interesting point is around really the economics of running your business, the debt to equity balance. Mm. Some entrepreneurs do not like too much of debt. Some entrepreneurs are afraid of equity partners because of the afraid of partners coming and controlling their business. However, they need to understand the balance of debt to equity. You have to fund your business appropriately in the different cycles.